What's up, y'all? This is your boy Scotty, and you're watching my review of Love and Hip Hop Atlanta Season 2, Episode um, 13. What's up, y'all? Um, if you see the way I'm, my attitude is right now, I am kind of... I'm annoyed right now, and it has a lot to do with a, with a lot of things that's going on around me. Like, I'm really annoyed by a lot of shit right now, but I'm trying to manage, and I'm trying to keep my cool, and I'm trying to remain calm about everything that's been going on around me. It's just, I'm just in an annoying-ass place right now. So, if you notice that I'm not really turned up or, you know, my normal self, I'm just letting you know ahead of time. I'm trying to be as funny as possible. But, you know, it is what it is. I'm just annoyed right now. I'm in a bad fucking mood. So, it is what it is. But before I get into anything else, um, I just want to shout these people out before I just get into the main thing at hand. I want to send a special shout out to um, Nay Bessa. Um, shout outs to On The Ocean 007. He does videos. Please support. Um, shout out to Justin J. Um, he's from Memphis. And he's funny as fuck. One of my new people. And like I said, we've been hitting it off very well. He actually does reviews just like I do. And he has the same type of personality that I have. So if you want to laugh, get down with the get down with Justin J. Shout out to the Ghetto View. And shout out to um, Jamar. I'm going to leave all their links at the bottom. And I also want to send a shout out to Samantha Michelle. She follows me on Twitter. And um, she does um, blogs about your favorite television shows and somebody sent me a dm on twitter and they wanted me to shout them out and i want to send a shout out to brit her name is at miss brit um underscore 87 shout out to you um and i also want to send oh shit somebody sent me a private message on youtube and i saw it they wanted me to do an ex scott and y'all know that i have basically shut those that segment down but because she asked that of me i'm gonna go ahead and do it and for those of you that's asking me to do reviews well not really a review but to do a video talking about the zimmer the trayvon martin case i refuse to speak about it i don't want to talk about it i just refuse i want to keep my channel as entertaining as possible and i just don't need stupid ass people coming up under my shit trying to come for me about my opinion. I just rather not talk about it. I didn't talk about Paula Dean and I'm damn sure not gonna talk about Zimmerman. I'm sorry y'all, I can't do it. But um if I do it, I'm gonna have to do it with my people. But as far as me, nah, I can't do it. But get into the video. Um the episode starts off with Rashida. Rashida um comes to see Needy Me Me and basically they had a conversation before she came over and the thing was she came by to talk to Mimi about what's going on between her and Kurt. My thing is, you know, I know that Mimi is nobody's um judge of character when it comes down to a relationship and I know that she can't really give nobody no advice when she can't take her own, but that's just really being human. I mean, I give my friends advice a lot about their relationships, and I can't seem to take my own a lot. Like, a lot of the advice that I gave my friends, I should have been taking it myself, and I ain't take the same advice that I gave them until three years later. So, with that being said, I kind of understand. But it was nice to see Rashida talking to a friend. I'd much rather it been Erica because... From my eyes, before her and Kay Michelle fell out, I could have seen this scene take place between her and Kay. But with her and Kay not being friends anymore, I feel like that scene should have been with Erica. Because I just feel like they have the closest relationship. But because Mimi has gone through, I believe she went to Mimi because she knows that Mimi has had her own share of relationship issues. She felt like it would have been the best thing to talk to um to Mimi about it. And Mimi was there for her. Mimi gave her advice. She was Rashida's, um, you know, shoulder to cry on. And I and I really did enjoy that scene. I didn't enjoy, you know, Georgia Prune's pain at all. But I really did understand where she was coming from and why she even came to Mimi. So kudos to Mimi for being, you know, her shoulder to cry on. So we get to Scrappy and Mama D. I'm so sick of Mama D, honestly. I'm tired of her. She fucking annoying. And, you know, Scrappy's basically was talking about his jail time and, and him trying to go to rehab for marijuana. But, I mean, 
you know, people was trying to dog him out for just going to um, rehab for marijuana. People just say, well, it's just marijuana. Well, at the end of the day, y'all, marijuana is still a drug and it's not legalized everywhere else. So if it's not legalized in your damn state, then you need to stop doing the shit. I'm just saying, I ain't trying to be nobody judge and jury because I got friends that smoke weed. I'm just about the only person out of my whole damn circle of friends that has never, ever touched a blunt ever in their life. The more that I do it, the, the only thing that I do is drink myself to a pit. But I am not touching no weed. That's one thing I ain't doing. No disrespect to those who do it, but Scotty ain't touching no weed because I am too motherfucking handsome to be smoking weed. That's how I feel. So, you know, Mama D discussed the whole incident that happened at that party, and she's talking about the stunt that Erica and Filet Mignon pulled. My thing is, I don't understand why you mad, bitch, because you went with Erica to pawn the motherfucking ring. Then when Erica told Scrappy about it, your ass sit up there and talked about, ain't nobody gonna punk him out. Ain't nobody punk his ass out. All she did was tell him that she pawned the fucking ring. The relationship is over. He been fucking around with Shay, letting her give him back rubs. I mean, what do you expect? You are so fucking quick to paint Erica out as an unfit woman, but you're an unfit mother apparently because that's why Scrappy don't know what the fuck to do with his life or do with himself because of the simple fact your ass hasn't been a mother to him. So with that being said, it's a mess. So you just need to have a seat. You just need to shut the fuck up. You just need to just hush because you don't know what the fuck you talking about at all. At all. You, you don't know what you're talking about and you need to have a fucking seat. So... So, Drew, Tracy, and Deshaun met up for lunch. And Drew talked about the simple fact that he wanted to, um, you know, meet up with him and get to know him because he's going to be around his son. So, everything was going fine until he started looking, Googling him and looked up a damn um, mug shot. Now, I felt like Drew was a pussy for that. I don't give a fuck what nobody say. Everybody want to come and say, you know what I'm saying? You know, the man going to be around his son. So that's why he did what he did. That's true. He is going to be around his son. And I don't kind of, I kind of don't blame Drew for wanting to look into it and see what type of man he is. I'm not faulting him for that. It's the way he went about it. He's not doing that for reasons like to say he's trying to protect Tracy. He doing that because he's hating. That's the only reason why I called him a pussy and that's the only reason why I didn't agree with what the fuck he did. He did that out of spite. He did that because he a faggot pussy ass nigga. That's why he did that and that's why I don't agree with it. And then Baby Bop decided to break up with him about the whole situation. If he was really feeling the dude, you would have tried to work the shit out. Yeah, he lied about it, but I mean, at the end of the day, you still walking around here crying over his motherfucking ass, Drew motherfucking ass, and he cheated on your ass while you was motherfucking pregnant. So with that being said, you really need to shut the fuck up, baby Bob. It's just like, you know what I'm saying? That makes me think that you didn't even want Neo slash Seal slash Aaron Hall, whatever. You didn't want the motherfucker no way and you was only using him to get back at Drew. So, I don't know. I just felt like that whole situation was fucked up and I just felt like Baby Bob should have worked on her situation with him instead of just breaking up with him just because of the fact that Drew went out and tried to look up some shit on him. Not out of, not out of curiosity. Well, it is out of curiosity. Not out of, um... You know, out of the fact that he was looking out for Tracy, he did that because he was jealous. And I want somebody to tell me that I'm wrong because I don't think I am. That's just my opinion. So, Stevie um, and Jocelyn went to go see Stevie J. Daddy. And Stevie J. Daddy, Stevie J. is nothing but a slitting image of his dad. And, you know, Jocelyn was saying that, you know, she, you know, he, he, she feels like Stevie J. needs a woman by his side, a strong woman by his side. And, you know, his dad was basically saying that um, if Stevie J. ain't going to push himself to do what the fuck he needs to do, then she needs to be the one to give him that extra push. And, you know, I think she took that as a sign to say, okay, I'm going to ask this nigga to marry me. That's what, that's what it sound like to me and I feel like if a motherfucker ain't thinking about marrying you and you got to be the one to ask him then nine times out of ten a nigga don't want to marry your ass nine times out of ten and I'm getting so tired of people always trying to come for me thinking that I'm hating on Jocelyn and Stevie J's relationship first of all that ain't nothing to hate on Number one, that ain't nothing to hate on. Number two, I don't want what Stevie J and Jocelyn got because it's sick and twisted as fuck. And number three, my thing is, Jocelyn is stupid. 
I don't care how you try to smack it, flip it, or rub it the fuck down. It's stupid. That whole relationship is fucking stupid. You can't tell me nothing. You can't tell me different. You can't say nothing. It's stupid to me. Jocelyn is a dumb ass and you can't tell me different. I don't give a damn what you got to say. It's fucking stupid. I have never in my life heard of no bullshit like that. Like... You know what I'm saying? She constantly talks about how she is not a side bitch. When all reality, her ass was is still second choice. Stevie just got through telling Mimi that he wanted to fuck her about that car that he bought her. Or rented for her. Whatever it was. He just got through saying that he wanted to fuck her. He does. I just think that if, if, if push came to shove and Mimi wanted to be back with Stevie like I said in the last video... Mimi and Stevie J will be together again and Jocelyn will be right there on the sidelines being a bitch again. I'm sorry, but it's stupid to me. And I can't say nothing about her being in love with him because we have all have been in love with people that wasn't right for us. I was, my friends was, everybody has. So I'm not the type of person to fucking judge a bitch for being in love with somebody that I'm supposed to be in love with. But however, you can't sit up here and pass judgment on people, Jocelyn, when you're doing the same shit that Mimi did. I'm just saying, bitch can be mad at me all the fuck they want to, but that's just how I feel about the situation. I think that Jocelyn is full of it. I think that she's a hypocrite. Bottom line, be mad all you want to. I could give a fuck. So then, you know, we get into Kay, Mimi, and Arian, and, um, you know, they have some girl time, and, um, Arian decides to say what I've been saying since season one. I've been saying this since last year, but y'all bitches didn't believe me from the motherfucking rooftop. I've been saying it from the very beginning. Arian likes to bump fucking purses, wallets, pocketbooks. She likes to eat the cake. I've been saying it. How many times have I said that? Y'all tried to say I was just being, being ignorant, but... I've been saying it. I said that from the beginning. I was right. I was right. I told y'all. I told y'all. I told y'all Arian was a lesbian. I told y'all she liked to eat more than Pizza Hut. I told y'all. I told y'all. And I told y'all. And I told y'all that. I couldn't help but scream at the damn TV. I said she ain't telling us nothing new. Just like she ain't telling Mimi nothing new. And if Mimi just not found out, bitch, you better be aware that she want to eat that pussy out. Because that's what I still believe. But if she can't get Mimi, the next best thing is K. Michelle. So that ain't nothing new to me. So getting into um, Tracy and Drew... They sitting up here talking about a situation that happened seven years ago when she was pregnant and he cheated on her. I'm so fucking over them and I'm sorry y'all. I'm not going to talk about baby bop and DJ baby gay Drew. I'm sorry. I don't want to talk about them. Sorry. Okay, so let's see. Mimi and Kurt discussed something, discussed the situation between him and Rashida. And I ain't going to lie. Like I said, I did wonder when the fuck did she become an expert on good relationships. But at the same point in time, she was giving him good ass fucking advice. And it looks like, like I said, she's the type of bitch that can give good advice but can't take good advice. And everybody, we'll be hypocrites if we say we ain't like that. So, she did give him some good advice and I did enjoy her insight on the situation though. Um, So... Kay, Michelle, and Jocelyn met up, and Jocelyn was basically telling Kay about um, the situation that's going on between her and Stevie J. And she was saying that she's in love with him, and they've been talking about marriage and buying houses. And of course, yeah, Kay felt some type of way because, you know, she's it's weird because she's cool with Jocelyn now. And Jocelyn's talking about Stevie when she's heard a lot of shit about Stevie from Mimi. So, of course, it's going to be weird. And everybody keep on talking about, oh, K. Michelle fake because she cool with Jocelyn. Oh, K. Michelle fake. Oh, K. Michelle fake. K. Michelle fake this. K. Michelle fake that. Get a fucking grip. Get over it. Why do I say get over it? Because of the simple fact. Because of the simple fact. I'm saying get over it because of this. If... K is fake for being cool with Jocelyn. Then Mimi is fake for still being cool with Rashida, even though she cool with K Michelle. I'm just saying, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm cool with a lot of people that my friends aren't cool with. But the difference is, I don't bring up my friend. I know where my loyalty is. You know what I mean? Just like, for example, this is me. This is the friend right here. 
And this is the other one. I'm chopping it up with this friend. I'm cool with this friend. We talk about everything. Blah, 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 blah. Me and this one, we hang out a lot. Da, 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 da. But these two friends of mine don't like each other. So with that being so with that being said, when I'm around this friend, we don't bring up this friend. When I'm around this friend, we don't discuss this friend. So what I do, I'm cool with you and you. I don't talk about you to them. And I don't talk about you to them. That's basically what I'm saying. So it, there's a way to do it. So you can't call nobody fake just because they being friends with somebody that your friend don't like. I just think that this fucking petty. You can't be mad about that. But um, get it into the next part. Um, I just think that Scrappy needs to get his shit together. I think that, you know, that dude was giving him straight up advice and, you know, he just needs to be a better example. You know what I'm saying? Like, he needs to do better with his relationships. He, it doesn't even necessarily have to be Eric in the next relationship he need to get in. He need to make sure that it's solid. He need to get himself together. He need to get his career back on track. I really want to see Scrappy win because I like Scrappy and I want to see him, you know, succeed. And the stuff that the dude was telling Scrappy was really the truth. So, he really needs to listen to it. Um... So we get into K Michelle and Jocelyn. They go to Carly Red's um performance. And K Michelle is trying to get them together since, you know, K and Carly done got back cool. So she felt like, okay, Jocelyn and Carly can be back cool. Whatever. So um, you know, they all come, you know, they come to the event and you know, she says that she's performing with Beanie Man. And you know, I seen this shit like um like two months, like a month or two ago. I seen this on YouTube. And um she looked a mess. Her hair was a mess, her outfit was a mess. Um Aunt Grandma Carly just needed to have a motherfucking seat. I mean, damn. She did. Did she take? Did she drink any of her insurance before she got on that damn stage? Like I, I'm, I'm just saying, like. I'm just, I'm so sick of Grandma Carly. And the performance was a mess. And K. Michelle and Jocelyn was just killing me on the sideline. Because Jocelyn was just throwing so much shade. And then K. Michelle was like, now, you know, damn well she can't be even on Beyonce. I said, be nice, not delusional. And, you know, K. and Jocelyn was just fucking gassing her ass up. You know what I'm saying? Telling her that the performance was good. And I'm looking at them like, now, look, now, y'all know damn well that performance wasn't good at all. That was not a good fucking performance, period. It really wasn't. So, um, you know, Jocelyn starts with the shade throwing. She said, um, I like your hair color. It makes you look young. And then she starts taking jabs and then Jocelyn's like, I, I mean, it's not my motherfucking fault about your be about you being old, bitch. It ain't my motherfucking fault. And then Kay, you know, breaks them apart. And then it's so fucking funny. Like, that was the funniest shit I had ever seen. And then, you know, Kay and Jocelyn walk away. I'm sorry, y'all. I like Kay and Jocelyn together. Together. That's the only time I like Jocelyn when she with Kay Michelle. So we get into Rashida and Mama Prune. And, um... Rashida told her mama that she's filing for a divorce and it's gotten that bad to the point where he didn't went up with some hoes and shit and, you know, then turned up with Benzino and everybody else. So when Mama Prune come outside, that's when Kurt pulls up on a um, motorcycle. And then um, that's when um, Mama Prune decided she wants to leave and she was like, I think y'all need to move that motorcycle out the way. So then she backs out and hits the fucking motorcycle and then... She pulls back up in the driveway and runs it over and it get in its own fire. I was sitting up here tripping the fuck out. I'm like, that's what I'm saying, Mama Prone. You better get his motherfucking ass together. And Kirk deserved every piece of what the fuck he got. I'm saying he deserved every piece of it. And that's just what it is. So I'm like, God damn. That Mama Prone, that shit was too fucking hilarious. You know what I'm saying? It's just a mess. That was that shit was too funny, but that's all I got for y'all today on this review for Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. Episode 13. We got two more episodes till we get to the reunion that they just filmed last Thursday. Follow me on Twitter at www.twitter.com slash Mr. Underscore Still Standing Without the G. And um, Instagram me at King of the South 23. So, y'all, I'm sorry if this review wasn't as good as, as the other ones are. But, y'all, I'm just in a bad mood. And I, was, and I had to give y'all the video. I wasn't going to slack off. I'm trying to get myself back together with giving y'all the videos on time. So, I'm out of here, y'all. Peace.